Hello. We are going to talk about boiling um, potatoes today. So we're making the perfect mashed potatoes recipe. Um, I am using Yukon Gold mashed potatoes. These are the best potatoes for mashing because they are the least starchy. That means they don't get sticky. If you've ever had potatoes that get really sticky, um, it's probably like a russet or something like that, a potato with a brown skin. Um, these Yukon Golds, they have a yellowish flesh and they don't get sticky. If you like your potatoes peeled, by all means you can peel them. I am not gonna peel these today. I'm just gonna leave the skins on. I like the skins and they have a lot of nutritional value, but I did wash them really well, okay? All right, I think we had a little freeze up moment there. Let's get back to these potatoes. So Yukon Golds, I'm using a chef's knife today, okay? When I use my chef's knife, okay, I'm actually gonna kind of choke up on the handle so that my thumb and my index finger, my pointer finger are actually almost kind of on the blade. Um, and that just helps me steady the blade. Obviously potatoes are large, therefore I need to use a large tool, okay? So with my potato, I'll go ahead and set this down like this. Um, we're just going to cube these up, okay? So I'm gonna start by cutting my potato in half, okay? I have my left hand here in my claw. You can see the flesh of this potato is more yellow than it is white, okay? That's why it's called a Yukon Gold, okay? Um, and then again, I'm just gonna cut down the middle. When I have a flat surface, it makes my potato infinitely easier to work with. And then I turn my food so that I'm not adjusting my hands, I'm adjusting my food. Okay, and I'm just gonna cut these into some big, like, one inch chunks, okay? Big chunks of potato, okay? And for potatoes to cook evenly, you actually wanna put potatoes in cold water. So this pot that is sitting on my stove right now has cold water in it, it is not warm yet. Um, you want them to cook evenly, and so they, the water and the potato needs to come up to temperature at the same time, okay? So again, I cut my potatoes in half, and then in half again, okay? And then I turn them, and I'm gonna just chop them into my big chunks here. All right. This recipe is about one and a half pounds. Normally you can get potatoes in like a five pound bag at the grocery store. Um, so that's just about a third of your bag of potatoes, okay? I um, mean, the only reason we actually measure this um, is because I have a specific measurement for the fat that I'm adding to this recipe for the butter and the cream that get added to the recipe, okay? So again, half it up, half and half, and then cut them into nice big chunks, okay? So there are my Yukon Golds. I'm gonna make sure that the potatoes are all under the water. I don't need this very deep, okay? I just want the water to cover the potatoes, all right? only about a quarter of an inch over the potato. I don't need it super deep, okay? So once this is seasoned, or once this is in here, I'm going to salt my water, okay? Um, so a teaspoon is about two good pinches, okay, if you use salt like this. Otherwise, you can definitely um, measure it out with a measuring spoon, okay? So we want that to go. Once the salt is in there, we are going to turn it on to high heat. Okay, we're gonna turn it on to high until it boils, okay? So remember boiling. This is when that water is going really, really actively, okay? A simmer is just that slow, the water's just moving a little bit like this. So we're gonna bring this water up to a boil, get it really, really active, and then we're gonna turn it down to a simmer and let the potatoes cook to that lower temperature, okay? They only cook for about 10 or so minutes until they get tender and then we will mash them. All right, so we are just about done now with the potatoes. They've been boiling for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, you know they're done when you can take a fork or a spoon or something like that, and the potato just smushes against the side of your pot, okay? You shouldn't have to use anything sharp. It should just fall apart, okay? So I'm gonna turn the heat off on the potatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and get my cream and butter mixture warming. Okay, this is a great way to help make sure that your food stays or your potatoes are nice and smooth. So we're gonna do four tablespoons of cream, okay? All right, which is also a fourth of a cup, okay? Um, and we're gonna
we're going to do two tablespoons of butter. Okay, and so I'm just going to set that on the stove to start to kind of melt and get warm together. All right, now it is time to drain my potatoes. So I'm going to do that over here in my sink. All right, so I grab my pot. I pick the shortest distance to my colander. This is a colander, remember, a bowl with holes and a big foot on the bottom so it stands up by itself. Okay, and I'm just going to pour the potatoes through the colander, okay? Hot, get all the water out, okay? I'm gonna make sure that all the water is off my potatoes, and now I'm gonna return my potatoes to my pot, okay? Bring it back in a cool burner on my stove. Okay, that's what happens when I don't have a cameraman, all right? I need a potato masher, and that's it, okay? So, like I said, my butter, and cream is melting back here, hopefully, maybe. Okay, probably should have started this a little sooner. Cut the butter into some smaller pieces so it melts faster. Okay, but while that is getting soft, I'm gonna go ahead and start mashing the potatoes, okay? Okay, the potato masher, it just, Take the potatoes and it's going to kind of turn them into like a potato -y powder. Okay, they're going to look very dry. That's totally fine. They're supposed to. We just took all the water off of them. Okay, and boiling your food actually does dry it out. I know that seems kind of counterintuitive since you're cooking it in water. Um, but when you boil food, it does tend to dry it out, which is why we have to add moisture back in. Okay. So now that my potatoes are nice and mashed, like I said, I left the skins on. These skins are so thin and they do have a lot of nutritional value. Um, and because I cut the potatoes up nice and small, I am not even remotely bothered by them. Okay, see, some of the skins stick to the potato masher. Okay, and just pull them off, throw them back in the pot. Okay. All right, I'm gonna grab a nice big spoon to stir with, maybe. I switched kitchen, so I forgot where everything is. All right. Oh, maybe I won't be grabbing a nice big spoon. There it is. Nice big spoon, okay? All right, and I'm gonna use this spoon to mix in my butter and cream, all right? Oh, <laughs> I know it's not melting. I turned the wrong stove on. I get so distracted trying to teach and do all this at the same time. All right, it's fine. We'll just let the potatoes melt the butter, okay? So, put that in there. All right, and now I'm just gonna start stirring it around. The reason I am using a spoon now instead of my masher, okay, is because anytime you work something that has starch in it, whether that's potatoes, flour, okay, um, you can continue to make it sticky if you use too much action. The potato masher is a lot of action happening, whereas the wooden spoon isn't as much action happening in the pan, okay? So I've got my potatoes here. They're getting nice and smooth, okay? You guys can see them. If you want them to be exceptionally smooth, you can put them in a stand mixer or use an electric beater and really um, almost whip them. Um, until they have more air in them and there's no lumps whatsoever. Um, but I don't mind a few lumps, it's kind of a little more rustic. Um, it lets me know I'm actually eating a potato um, and homemade potatoes, not instant potatoes, okay? So there you have it. Um, make sure you taste your food along the way so that you know. Maybe a little more salt, but I salted those really good when they were cooking and they're darn near perfect. All right, so taste your food. Don't use the same fork, okay? Taste your food along the way. Make sure that you get like the flavor you've got. Those are good. All right, I'll see you guys in class.